In this video, I'm going to show you how I made this astronaut animation in Blender. Hope you enjoy it and don't forget to subscribe. Okay, first we're going to head over to the website Blender Swap and we're going to look for an astronaut for our scene. I'm going to click this one that I like. It's made by ComGeek. You don't have to go with the same one as me. You can use a different one from Blender Swap or go somewhere else. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and download the Blender file. Once we have the file downloaded and opened up, you can see that we now have our astronaut in Blender. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is select all the different parts of the astronaut. Then we're going to press Command J to combine everything together. Then I'm just going to delete this little wire at the back. And then once we've done that, we're going to select both the astronaut and its wig. Then we'll press Command C to copy it. And once we've done that, we're going to go over to File. Then I'm going to press New. General, don't save, and now we have a new scene opened up. Then we'll press A to select everything, and then press X to delete. Then we're going to press Command V to paste our astronaut into our scene. And then we'll select these two objects that got pasted in as well, and press X to delete. Then we'll head over into Ender Preview Mode. Then next we're going to go into Front View by clicking Y. Then we'll select our astronaut and press the full stop key to zoom in. Then we're going to press shift A and add a camera. Then we're going to press ctrl alt 0 to snap our camera to our view. Then we're going to play around with our camera's location until we get it in the white position. Then we're going to go over to output properties. I'm going to change the X resolution to 1080. Then I'm going to head over to camera properties. Then I'm going to bring the pass part out to 1. And then we're going to bring our camera up a bit so that our astronaut is resting at the bottom. And now we have our camera and our astronaut set up. Okay, next we're going to add a background to our scene. So we're going to press Shift A and add a play. Then we're going to bring it back behind the astronaut. Then we'll scale it out and we're going to move it back a bit more. Then we'll scale it on the X axis to make the plane more of a rectangle. Then we're going to press RX90 to rotate it. Then we'll go back into camera view. Then we'll bring the plane up a bit so it fits the whole view of the camera. Then we'll head over into the shader editor. We'll give the plane a new material. Then we'll go back into camera view. We'll press Shift A and add an image texture. And then we'll connect the image texture to the principal BSDF. And then we'll open up our stars background. And this will be the background for our animation. Okay, next we're going to add the moon and the earth into our scene. But first, I'm just going to move back the background a bit. I might scale it out a bit more. Next, I'm going to paste in my earth and my moon. Then I'm going to bring them over here. Then I'm going to press the full stop key to zoom in. This is the earth model that I'll be using today. And this is the moon model that I'll be using. You don't have to use the models that I'm using. You could either go find your own or maybe sketch fab or blender swap. Or if you want to, you could find a tutorial on how to make your own earth or moon. Okay, so I'm going to move my earth to the back of the scene. Then I'm going to scale it down a bit. Then I'll head into camera view. And then we're just going to move the model into the top right corner of our camera. Once we've done that, we'll turn off overlays to have a better view of how our scene's looking so far. Okay, so it's looking good. So next we're going to bring in the moon. So we'll head out of camera mode and we'll go over and select the moon. So we're going to drag this over and rotate it. Then we'll drag it back to the background. We'll go into camera view. We'll move it into the white position. Bring it down a bit. Then we'll scale it down till it's the white size. Then we'll continue to do that until we get it into the position that we want. Okay, this is looking good so far, so let's bring in the next couple of models. Okay, next we're going to bring in our space station and our another astronaut. So we're going to press Command V to paste them in. Then I'll just press the full stop key to zoom in on our models. This is the space station model that I got from Sketchfab, which I downloaded and combined together into one model. Then we've also got a astronaut model, which I got from Blender Swap and downloaded and cleaned it up a bit. 
both of these models are available in the description below but if you want you can go find your own ok next we're going to go over and delete this extra stuff that got imported in with the models so we're just going to press X and delete next we're going to select the space station and bring it into the scene so we'll start moving it in we'll scale it down a bit then we'll right click, select origin and press origin to geometry. Then we'll continue to move it into the scene and then we'll move into camera view to have a better view. And then we'll continue to move it into position. Then we'll double tap R to rotate the space station into a better position. And then we'll continue to move it and rotate it about until we get it looking just right. Next we're going to bring in the other astronaut, so we'll select him, go into top view and bring him into the scene. And then we're just going to continue to move it about and scale it down and rotate it until we have it in the right position. You can pause the video and do this yourself and get your astronaut looking just right as well. Okay, once you have your astronaut looking just right, which you don't need to rush, you can take your time. And then we'll go over into material preview to have a better look of the scene. And this is what we've got so far. Okay, before we move on to the next step, only 2.5% of people watching these videos are subscribed. So if you're enjoying the video, why not hit the subscribe button? Next we're going to add this pizza and soda which I got from Sketchfab because maybe the astronaut is hungry and he might need something to eat. Okay once you have the pizza and soda downloaded and in the scene we're going to move it behind the astronaut and then we'll head into camera view to have a better look. We'll move it a bit more closer in and then we'll continue to move it about until we get it at the right distance and the right size. Then we'll double tap R to rotate the pizza to have a better look of it. Okay, once we have the pizza looking just right, let's bring in the soda cup. So I'll select it and bring it next to the pizza. We'll press the full stop key to zoom in. And then we'll go back into camera mode again to have a better look of where it needs to be. And then like we did with the pizza, we'll move and rotate around the soda cup until we get it looking just right. And now we have our pizza and soda in our scene. Now let's bring in the final model into our scene. Okay, the last model we're going to bring into the scene is this space shuttle from Blender Swap. And like I said before, you don't have to use the same model as me, you can always go find your own. And then once we've downloaded our final model, let's add it into our scene. So we'll select the space shuttle and drag it in, and then we'll scale it down, go into camera mode, and then we'll just put the space shuttle underneath the earth. Okay, now that we have all our models in our scene, now I'm just gonna play around with the models until I get everything looking just right. You can also pause the video and take your time to do this as well. And now that we've added all our models into the scene, now let's move on to the next step, adding lighting into our scene. Okay, before we start lighting the scene, First I'm going to select the background plane, then I'm going to head over into overhead view and we're just going to move back the background just a bit and then we'll head into camera view and then we'll scale up the plane until it fills up the whole view of the camera. Next we'll head into the shader editor, we'll go back into camera view and then we'll enter into material preview and then I'm going to delete the principal BSDF and then we're going to press shift A and add an emission shader. And then we'll connect our um, image to the emission and then we'll connect our emission to the material output. And then we'll change the strength of the emission to 0.45. And now we'll head back into layout and then we're going to press shift A and add in a sunlight. And then we're going to move the sunlight back behind all of the models. Then we'll go into camera view to have a better look at the light. And then we'll just drag it up until it is visible. And then we'll go over into light settings and we'll change the strength to 5. 
Okay, next we're going to go out of camera view and we're going to press Shift D and duplicate the sunlight. And then we're going to bring this duplicated light and we're going to bring it near to the Earth model. And then we're going to zoom in on the light and then we're going to double tap R to rotate it and point it at the Earth. And then I'm going to continue to move around the light until I'm happy with the way that it's looking. And then next I'm going to go over to our main astronaut at the front and give it some lighting. So I'm going to press Shift A and add an area light. So next we're just going to bring it to the side. We're going to zoom in. We're going to scale it down on the Y axis. And then we're going to bring it back next to the astronaut. And then next we're going to scale it out a bit on the X axis. And then I might scale it a bit more down on the Y axis as well. Okay, next we're going to bring the light up a bit, so it's the height of the astronaut's helmet. And then we're going to rotate it on the Y axis to 90 degrees so that it's facing at the astronaut. Okay, next we're going to go into front facing mode. And then we'll press the full stop key to zoom in. And then we're just going to bring up the light just a bit more. Then I'm just going to drag it on the X axis until I get it in the position that I like. And then we'll change the strength of the area light to 4. And then I'm going to press Alt D and duplicate the light. And then we're going to select the duplicate and we're going to rotate it. So we're going to change it to minus 90 degrees. Okay, next we're going to go back into camera view. And now I'm going to turn off overlays and go into render preview. And then we're going to click on Viewport Shading and then we'll turn on Scene World and Scene Lights. And then we'll go over to World Properties and we'll change the colour down to full black. And this is what we've got so far. Okay, next we're going to go over to Render Properties and we're going to change the Render Engine to Cycles. And now let's go see how it looks in Cycles now. And now our scene is looking pretty much done and we can go into the final stage, the animation. So first let's start by bringing up the timeline and we're going to change it to 125 frames and this is going to be how long our animation is. Okay next we're going to select the satellite, we're going to press the full stop key to zoom in, we're going to open object properties and we're going to animate the satellite on the X axis. So we're going to change the rotation to zero and we'll make that our first keyframe. And then we'll go all the way to the last frame and we'll change the rotation to 360. And we'll mark that as our last frame. And now if we play back the animation, we'll have a seamless animation of the satellite rotating. Okay, now we're going to animate the space shuttle. So we'll select the space shuttle we're going to camera view and we're just going to animate it so it goes across the screen but first I'm just going to select the camera and then we'll go into object data properties and we'll lower down the pass part out and we'll go back to the start of the timeline then we'll select our space shuttle and then we'll open object properties and then we'll bring the space shuttle out of camera view and then we're going to press I to keyframe that location and then we'll go all the way to the end of the timeline and we'll bring our space shuttle all the way to the top of our camera and then we'll press I to keyframe that location and then let's go back to frame 1 and play the animation okay as you can see the space shuttle is way too close to the satellite so we're going to change that by selecting the satellite and the astronaut and just bringing it down a bit and then we can replay the animation and this is looking pretty good so far okay next we're going to animate the pizza and the soda okay first we're going to start by selecting the pizza and then we're going to press I to keyframe location and rotation and then we'll also do the same for the soda cup as well. Then we're going to select the pizza, we're going to move to frame 30 and then we're going to move the pizza to a different position and maybe rotate it a bit. And then we'll press I again to keyframe the location and rotation. And again we'll do the same with the soda cup, we'll move it to a different spot and we'll rotate it. Then I might move it a bit more and then we'll press I to keyframe it. And then we'll head over to frame 50, we'll select the pizza again, move it to a different position, rotate it 
and keyframe it again. And of course we'll do the same with the soda cup as well. And then we'll repeat this two more times until we get to the last frame. You can pause the video and do this yourself as well. Okay, when we get to the last frame, we're going to select the first frame and we're going to press Shift D and duplicate it and bring it all the way to the end to make our animation loop. And of course, we'll do the same with the soda too. Okay, now let's play back the animation and see how it looks. Okay, now that we've done the pizza and the soda, let's animate the camera. Okay, now back at frame 1, we're going to select our camera and we're going to press I and keyframe the location. And then we'll move over to frame 30 and then we're going to press G and then hold down on our mouse wheel and we're just going to zoom out a bit and then we'll move it a bit to the left as well. And I might bring the camera just a bit forward and then we'll press I once again to keyframe it. And then we'll move to frame 60 and then we'll move the camera out a bit and then a bit to the right and then maybe just a bit more out and then we'll press I to keyframe it again and then we'll move over to frame 90 and now we're going to recenter the camera so that our astronaut is in the middle we're going to zoom in and then once again I'll press I to keyframe the location and now I'm going to duplicate the first keyframe and we're going to bring it all the way to the end so that the animation loops. Okay, now let's go back to the beginning and play the animation. And you can always go back and refine something if you're not happy with the animation. And now we're going to move on to the final touches and then we're going to finish by when doing the animation. Okay, first I'm going to select the light, then I'm going to move it a bit more far away from the astronaut, and I'll do the same with the other light as well. Okay, next we're going to select both lights, and we're going to press S to scale them out on the Z axis, just to make them a bit more taller. And then we're going to change the power of both of the lights to 10, just to make them a bit more brighter. Okay, next we're going to press Shift A and add in an empty, and we're just going to bring that up might scale it out a bit and then we're going to select the two lights and then the last thing we'll select is the empty and we'll press ctrl p to parent it so now if we rotate the empty the lights will rotate with it and then with the empty still selected we're going to go over to object properties and we're going to keyframe the empty on frame one and then we'll move over to the last frame and we'll change the rotation to 360 so it's a full loop and we'll keyframe it. So now if you play the animation the lights will do a full rotation around the astronaut. Now let's go into enter preview mode, we'll turn off overlays, we'll go back to the first frame and we'll play the animation and now that you can see we've got this little light animation going on on the helmet. Okay, now that we've done that, let's move into the final steps before rendering. And then we're going to turn on the viewport's ability to see depth of field. Okay, next we're going to select the camera and turn on its depth of field. And then we're going to select the eyedropper tool to get our focus object, which is going to be the astronaut. And then we're going to change the f-stop to about 10 and we'll change the blades to about 6. So now if you play the animation, you see that we've got some depth of field going on here with our objects in the background blurred and our astronaut in focus. Okay, now I'm going to head back into material preview and then we'll click on render properties and then we'll head over to color management and we're going to change look to medium low contrast. And then we're going to go over to Output Properties and click the folder icon and find a place to save our animation. And then we'll go back to Render Properties and we'll change the samples to 300. And then we can finally go ahead and click Render Animation. If you want to, you can always use a free render farm or a paid one. And then when your animation has finished rendering, you're probably going to be left with something like this. 
if you're happy with this you can always stop here and this can be your end animation or if you want to make yours look like mine you can use a video editor to edit it to look like this I used Movavi to edit the animation which I'm actually currently using to edit this video that you're watching right now there are plenty of free or paid video editors that you could use to edit your animation okay the first thing I added was a white vignette then I added a bit of noise then I added some narrow strips to make it look more old and retro and then I added the lens flare which doesn't really make much sense on being there but I just thought it looked cool okay next I made the animation just a bit more sharper and then I added a bit of a tub TV effect to the animation then I added a bit of a 70s filter to make it a bit more or less bland and then I added a blue filter to the animation and then finally I added a glitch effect to the animation and that's how you make a national animation hope you've enjoyed it and learned something today don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video